This is where the magic happens. Oh. Get a little heat. Okay. So they naturally have a spin on them when they come off, yeah. huh? So they're already, the fiber comes natural, it's good. I haven't been twisted because it runs through the machine a lot better. And so I've been testing like one and a half PPI, two PPI, two and a half PPI, and I've been doing it and trying to get the right point. Okay. 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 That is so cool, bro. shuts down so it stops because what's happened is I've had a case where I've had line get twisted and hold this up mm. and I've came out and you can feel it because there's a strand missing mm. and I can feel it and I go back and the whole entire spool's a waste at that point oh because wow. it just keeps running yeah and so then I just trash it um, but for the most part they work but we don't have any uh, like I said I haven't had a stop in the last over 100 some spools so and it's every every stop here Hmm. Is caused by that machine right there. Every it all starts on the winding machines. It's okay, crazy. so you were also talking about too that when say a spool finishes off like that, you stop it there where most companies would throw in another bobbin and yeah. and keep running. And basically, it's a splice. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that's the stuff that I feel when I'm going through and spooling up a reel. Correct. Yep. <clears throat> and so what'll happen is so we can kind of, I can kind of show you one. Um, let me get this one back tight. Kind of an example of what it would look like and how it would be, and really, you I mean, they they do there's some companies, and just because I know what to look for, that can really hide it really well. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's still at the end of the day, there's a part, and the reason that we do not do it at all, regardless of the situation, is because there's a weak spot at that point, yeah. Um, now, you're talking about that that certain area will have that one strand less. Mm -hmm. different one just so you can kind of see and okay so at that point that's boiling back down to your your deal what you're saying about your braid i'll never find a cut or a splice in in any of your braid nope. when it comes through none of it we cut it out and so what we what we used to do is we would have it and as soon as that would happen we would go ahead and mark it and so we would take like a marker and we would splice it back in and then I would color from here down when it was about right there I color it all so that way when it came up to that point when we were re-spooling it onto the retail spools or breaking it down I could cut out that section mm -hmm. and so we knew about it at first I tried to do it with a marker that I write on these with and then it became very hard to see because it would wear off yeah. so I started using a permanent marker then it got to the point where in the very beginning because we had a lot because I didn't you know we didn't know exactly I mean, we were just learning how to do it mm -hmm. um, and so it, it began where if we had one we would just cut it off and take this off and so we didn't have to worry about it oh, and okay. the spool was new was done and that's why I had a lot of little spools and little off sizes because and we wasted a lot of money but at the end of the day it taught us to get it right fast and you know our customers didn't have that in their spools um, and so I was trying to see sometimes now because this ended the way it ended, which mm. is perfect, it didn't have any tight 
because what will happen is when one gets hung up, and it can be as simple as this, this happens a lot, we have to watch for, when we put these up and we put them on the machine, this will get wrapped around like that, mm -hmm. and all that's doing is adding a ton of tension, and it puts so much tension that in the line, especially hollow core, it will, it will cinch down, and you can actually watch it go up and down, where it's that, just in that, rip, that ripple effect that I find, yeah. yeah okay. Until it breaks. You know, then when it breaks. Um, so let's call this a. No way I'm watching that shit. <laughs> so right now, you know, we're still in the garage. We've got a warehouse. For what you see here, we're we're gonna have five times the amount of braiders that we have right now in about a month and a half ish. Um, oh. They come from Spain, so it takes them a while. It takes them about six to nine months to build it uh, to build these machines up so we ordered them back shoot way back in October. so y'all got nine so, ten machines first, right yeah but wow. it's technically five because there's two heads per um and so when if you watch our video on who we are and what we do when i said we spared no expense if you watch the china machines they have eight of these per one motor wow so if one goes down they all go down so that's why they spice they, it's quick. They spice it and get it going, right? Mm -hmm. um, even if you look at like pure fishing, they use Herzogs, which are great machines, but they're one motor per two heads. Mm -hmm. The reason we went with Rotera, not only being the best, uh, but they had motor per head, they last, these will last 50, 60, 70 years. Mm -hmm. um, and if this goes down, it doesn't affect that. Right? It doesn't cause any unnecessary stops. And what I'm noticing too, just, just an observation, I don't see any coloring buildup on any of your your roller heads right there, and, any, and anything. And that's what the red that we were talking about. That's why yeah. we we're so surprised because it's never happened anything. Um, and any like this one, you'll have some because that was our old machine. Yeah. And it had it before we got it. But mm -hmm. other than that, you don't. Yeah. So right now it's broke and normally this piece is up about right here because mm -hmm. it's it feeds still for a second especially if it's on this side it has to get all the way around to stop it so the brake is up in this area normally so what ends up happening is they just take another piece they put it up through tighten it oh and again through but the problem is your brake becomes up here and your new starts here so you have this much which we all know that that's all you need yeah you know is that much and if you're talking 200 pound hollow core take 12 into 200 that's what you're you know, one strand is what you're missing so this doesn't become 200 pound anymore um, and so it leaves a vulnerable spot and so that's why we cut it all the way out and and oversee stuff as you saw in your last video, they cut right here. Mm. There are some of the bigger ones that are making the big ones. What they'll do they'll run it up and then they take a... I've seen that. God, I've seen that, that stitching like that yep. of a different color on there. And I found that. Red. And that's still... That's hard to find. Now you can you find it because when you work through fingers, you can feel that. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, but if you not if you don't know what you're looking for, I mean that little tag in is pretty That's, hard to find. Yeah, it is. But you can yeah. definitely feel it, and there's a there's a shortage there of one strand for a while. Mm. Normally, when that happens, you will have a section here going in that will be tighter, because what causes this to break is one getting held up, and it will cinch down. So. Like your last video on the one line, it you had that, and I even told my wife. I said when he when, he, when you found that, I said there's a break somewhere further down. And, mm -hmm. sure and enough, you saw me going, go, yeah, going. Found it. It will, <laughs> it will eventually just give out and break. Wow. Yep. See, and I didn't know none of this, guys. I was just feeling for it because that's what I do. I feel for it. But now that you know more behind the scenes, you're seeing how tight line braid is taking it to the next step of what they're looking for, what they expect out of their braid, and also what they're not willing to include in their braid, and that is pretty awesome. Um, yeah, I'm just, I'm looking around and just, 
This is pretty cool. I've always wanted to see it. I've seen it in videos, but it's not the same as nice. seeing it in person. So I really would like to thank Mr. Jeff. Yeah, yeah from Tight Line Braid, bro. you know, for inviting me out here to come check this out. And yeah, this is pretty awesome, bro. That those are some magnificent colors. They really are. And I look forward to doing some real testing. Real testing. Yeah, real testing. <laughs> right. <laughs> and we'll have to back out when we get in the warehouse and have it, you know, the operation. Because right now we're doing 250,000 yards a month. And then uh, when that comes up, we'll be doing about 1.1 million. Awesome. That's and as you can see, this just goes into another thing. Or can you see why this machine is not running? Mm -hmm. This is the machine that is has an issue. Um, and there's what people don't know, this motor. There's a gear down here, but there are gears all under here that control these pieces. And so there's a lot of questions, and I'll show people real quick, that how does it break? So we'll put it on the top so you can kind of see it go around. But what it does is it transfers in these wheels, and it just falls itself all the way around. And they just intertwine over and over and over. Mm. So that's why when people ask, it takes 24 hours, literally 24 hours of solid running to make a thousand yards. Wow. So it does take a long time. So that's why having a lot of machines is necessary because you, I mean, you've got to create it. And also too, that also, I'm wondering if, because I've heard it said, they, they said to make like 2,500 or uh, 5,000 yards, it takes some days to do it. And I'm wondering if, because that one machine is producing so many heads like you're talking about, if that's slowing them down that yeah. much and and you're speeding it up because you're going one to one. Yeah, and so for Cortland, like I have uh, nothing but good things to say about Cortland. They do good stuff. Um, and if you've ever looked at their, their photo in their pictures, mm -hmm. They're, they're, they have a ton of machines, but their machines run 40% slower than these. Mm -hmm. And I love them because they they have a great look on everything. And so they use it as a marketing thing, like our slow uh, process. It doesn't change anything, but for them, it's a good tactic. I, I like it. Mm -hmm. um, but theirs are ran on a, a belt. A belt. They're belt driven. So there's a chain or a chain driven. Mm -hmm. There's a chain underneath them all that runs them the whole line. And they oh. can disengage the machine or not. But those machines are from, I believe, don't quote me on this, from the 1950s. They're old, mm -hmm. extremely old. But that just goes to show you the, the quality of the machines they use. I mean, they're, they're good stuff. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, no, it's a, it definitely takes a long time. This 30 pound that you saw in the very beginning, the first two machines, those will run for about 11, 12 days straight. That, those, when I start those machines up, they will not stop for another 10 days, so they've been running for a day, day and a half. Why, why so long? Because the... The, the fibers are so thin, mm -hmm. you can fit more on the bobbins. Ah. And so, and that's another thing that uh, a lot of people don't realize is when we start this machine up, this is what takes it from the fiber onto the, uh, the bobbins, and we actually measure it in grams with the tension meter because there's a certain percentage that you're allowed to run these at. If you run it over it, you stretch the fiber and it becomes weaker. Mm. If you run it under it, it gets soft and it can dig in. So it has to be in a pretty good range of that targeted number um, to make sure that it's not damaged or gets damaged on that machine. And our next machine you'll see when we come in, the next one we have coming in, that was our first one that I'm rebuilding right now. It's a two spindle, this is a four spindle. Our next one's a four spindle, but it's fully automated. I don't touch it. It puts the bottoms on, it winds them, it cuts them, and it spits it out the end for me to put on the machine. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Uh, that's nice. That's nice. Uh, I, I love, I'm always fascinated with stuff like this, behind the scenes kind of deal, and this is pretty awesome. It's my favorite color right there, guys. But I am loving that blue, the pink over there. Where's it at? There you go. And even too, your orange. I don't, I don't see any running right now, but no, I know you we got are, it. <laughs> uh, we are out of, uh, and that's what a lot of people ask about color. Is <clears> time. <throat> so because we do ours the way we do it, uh, and we can't just pressure dye. Everybody else runs white line. That's why you get bleeding. They run white line and they pressure and they pressure dye it. Mm -hmm. So it goes in like a big, looks like a chicken fryer. Yeah, uh, and they heat and it up. Heat it up and they dye it. Yeah. It's really hard on the uh, fiber. Mm. Our color is added into the resin before it's fiber and then it's extruded uh, 
color. That's why it has no bleed to it. So when somebody says, why don't you add another color, that cost me about $150,000. So it is pretty expensive to have multiple colors. So. Well, next Christmas, bro. <laughs> well, like I said, this is an awesome operation right here, bro. I'm, I'm truly, truly happy for y'all to see this. And I do appreciate it. And I'm, I know all my YouTubers will be looking forward to all the testing that's coming out of it and the knowledge that you have shared with us. This is awesome. Oh, man, look at them spools of color. Oh, look at that. I'm telling you, this, this this video doesn't know justice, but I do appreciate it. So, awesome, awesome. So, now y'all know all the stuff I find. You know, a lot of times I was just guessing or assuming, but after talking with Jeff and him sharing his knowledge about it, a lot of what I'm finding is my assumptions are kind of correct or whatever on it, but I didn't know how or why until now that he's explained that on there. So, and now, too, it also, for all that um that build up of that coloring or whatever you know that's all in there and y'all's machines are immaculate there's no no coloring around it or anything too that i can see so that's that's i guess that that really threw you off for a loop when i said oh, hey i found a little bit you know time i've ever seen it and that's yeah no it's uh <clears throat> And everybody said that, you know, hey, that's great. I'm like, oh, no, it's not. I'm not. You know, we, we set out to make the perfect braid. And, you know, we're human. There's going to be mistakes. I'm never going to uh, question that, you know, unless there's only one person or one one God. So that's uh, he's the only perfect one. But you know, mm -hmm. it'll happen. But at the end of the day, we take out every possibility we can take out uh, for a chance of an error. And so because we've been there, I don't want to be responsible for somebody losing the fish of their life i'm out and, I don't want to be and, and i'm in that same boat and i will i'll stand up all the way for it guys so again uh, this is team hard life captain albert sarfucci i'm over here with tight line braid made here in texas so very excited looking forward to seeing where this goes and where they grow to um and also too i mean I, I'm, I'm waiting for the cast bro like that's yeah. the video i want to get to i want to once we done spooling and getting the line capacities and stuff and uh, go from there but yeah i can't wait to do some casting with it so we'll see it stay tuned guys it's coming <laughs>